Hi, and welcome to the A-Rig Studio. Today, I'll be trying one of my favorite flies for fishing grayling and trout. I like to fish in the Norwegian rivers uh, for grayling and especially trout. And this is one of my favorite flies for that type of fishing. Today, I'll be tying the Adams dry fly, a typical classical fly, but this time with a little bit of twist. I'll make it as an upside down, not an upside down, as a parachute fly. And this is the one. I'll be starting with my hook, and this time I'm using a super dry in a size 10, relatively big hook, but uh, you know, big flies, big fish. I put my thread on just a little bit here and cut off the end. <clears throat> one of the big things about this one compared to the original Adams is that the original Adams uses a grizzly tip of the feathers for, for the wing. But this one I'm going to use a TMC, like Antron yarn, but it's a super floating yarn, which makes this fly float like, like a cork prop. I'll be tying it on this way, just on top of it, and I'll collect both of the ends with a little bit of thread around the base like this. I'm gonna trim this on off at the end, so I'll just let it stick up like this. I'll take my thread all the way back, back down, and I'm gonna use this fly right material. A very old type of dubbing material, but uh, you can really trim the dubbing to make it super, super thin and make this very, very slim body part. And I'll be doing it like this. All the way up. And I'll be stopping just a little. So I'll keep a little bit of room left up here for the base for my haggle. And I'm gonna put a little bit, and that's what the twist part is. I'm gonna put a little bit of foam underneath. So I'll cut a small strip from here. And I'll place it like this. So I'm gonna fold it around the base. And it's gonna I'm gonna trim it off at the end, but this is actually gonna put put a little bit of more floating device to this fly. The wing would do the trick itself, but adding a little bit of foam just makes this fly a super floater. I just turn the hook around. I have a rotary device, but otherwise you can just remove the hook and put it in like this, and I'm gonna use my tying thread to make a small base for the haggle. The haggle is gonna be a parachute, so it's gonna go this way. So now I've created a small base here. <clears throat> for the haggle, you can use lots of different kinds. I have some super long saddle feathers like this. Uh, it's a very expensive piece of of skin here, so you could might as well use the original capes like this. And the Adams uses both the grizzly and the brown, so I'm gonna use two haggles on this one. It would be a lot of e easier just to use a single one, but I have to make it as close to the original as possible, so I'm gonna use two feathers this time. I'll take a grizzly, I'll take the brown. And I'm gonna trim off the fibers like this. And I'm gonna turn them both around at the same place. So I'll take my grizzly and I'm gonna remove the fibers um, just on one of the sides. Because then when you when I take the first turns with the haggle, 
the fibers won't cross each other. So it, it gives the fly a little bit and it makes it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna tie this one in at the top. I'm gonna flip it over here like this. It's a little bit tricky this part, but uh, give it a shot. So I'm gonna tie it in like this and down. Flip it over again, and I'm gonna put my brown haggle. I'm just gonna put it on this area. A little trick could be cut off this haggle stem, get it out of the way. So I'm gonna attach my brown feather this way. Trim it off like that. For the thorax of the fly, I'm going to use a uh, spiky dubbing, brown colored, just a little bit. And I'm going to put it up here and turn it around just around the base of the feathers. Around this. And now I'll try to make this one look like a parachute fly. So I'm gonna turn the brown haggle at the start. And start one turn, the next turn underneath. Underneath and underneath. And you can see I'll actually fill up this room that I created with the tying thread. I'm gonna fill it up with a brown haggle. Take it down to this point and just carefully remove all the fibers sticking out here and tie it in. Just a few wraps and trim off. This one. There, I have the brown feather now. I'm gonna follow along with the grizzly and I'm gonna make it flip and mix in between the brown feathers. So the first wrap will be on top of all of it and I'm gonna move slowly down. Oh, it flipped over. And I'm doing this zigzag trick, which will make it fit in between the already turned brown feathers. Oh. And tie this one in few wraps and trim off the tip. The fly is actually finished at this point. So I'm gonna take my wood finish. And there it is. <clears throat> I have the base of the of the wing and I have the foam piece. The foam parts I'll trim them off as well and just leave a few millimeters sticking out on each side and it's actually gonna gonna make the fly float very very good. I've chosen to put on this chartreuse colored yarn on top and that's just for the silhouette. If you could have a look at the coarse fishermen, they often use uh, silhouette colors on their floating and that's uh, you, they use black or white, red, yellow, depending on whether the sun is shining or it's clouded or whatever it is. And I've chosen to take the, the yellow one this time just for 
yeah, fishing in my favorite <coughs> rivers in the daytime or when it gets a little bit dark, you, this color will, will make the fly be very visible at almost any time. I'll just trim the wing off like this, a small shape and yeah, there you go. The Adams parachute, one of my favorite flies.